Luke Robitaille here on the Rich Eisen Show. So Tom Wilson got three games for breaking uh, Aston Reese's jaw earlier in these playoffs. Now he hits Marcia so last night. Uh, the refs get together, decide not to give him a major penalty. Now this might this is in the hands, one would think, of the front office of the National Hockey League. Do you think Tom Wilson should be sat in these uh, uh, Stanley Cup finals based well, on what we saw, Luke? I'm on the board of governors. <laughs> I got to be careful what I say, but but I would say there the way the rule works or the way I think the league looks at, at those hits is it, it's time. So from the time the guy gets rid of the puck and then until he, he's open, mm -hmm. you know, they, they figure that out. And then does he hit the head? I think, you know, if you don't hit the head, he, it sounds like he, if he hasn't gotten a call today yet, it sounds like he, he's going to get away with it. But, uh, it, if you don't hit the head, you probably can get away with it. But, but it, they, it's definitely the time from the time the guy, the puck leaves a stick. It, it, as he, was he already coming that way too? There's there's different ways they're looking at. They really break it down. The league does a good job at the George Peros, who's a part of, in the, uh, the head of the committee for suspension. They break down the play. I mean, they see literally. You know, we're not seeing all the camera angles they're seeing. So. They're, they're probably, you know, looking at was he lining up to hit him? Was the player aware that he was coming and then look? And then they count the time from the, the time the puck leaves the stick. Well, in, in the National Football League, there's something called a defenseless player. That yeah. You're hitting somebody who's defenseless. Yeah. And it certainly looked like March or so was defenseless. Now, that said, it is the Stanley Cup Finals. You should have your head on a swivel, too, is another way to take a look at it. But he was definitely not – and he wasn't contacted in the head. Yeah. But – when you're hit that way and you're defenseless, there's the ice that will definitely contact you in the head, or vice versa. You know. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't look like he knew it was coming. I I, I would agree with that. It, it, it's definitely a, it's a hard one. It's a, and uh, but I know the guys there like they're not favoring one player over the other. They know uh, Tom Wilson's he, he's been caught a few times, so uh, you know. So they're looking at everything, and you know. But for, let, let me let me take you out of your role as executive yeah. board of governors executive. <laughs> Trying me, to be politically me, no, correct I, I, here. I, I don't want to get punished. I am noticing that, Luke. <laughs> Look, I don't want Bet I don't want you to get a phone call from Bettman. Although, if you do during this conversation, will you let me say hello? Yeah, I promise. Okay. Yeah, I will. Pass the phone to me. Hey, Gary, what's up? We're Mishboka. Let's chat. Um, so the thing I want to say though is, would you, as an old school player, somebody who's played there, who's been there and done mm -hmm. that? want to see a rule that there's a defenseless player in hockey in the same way that just where that just merely by itself he's not expecting it he's not seeing it mm -hmm. and he's hit like that that it's it's on you as a player not to hit somebody who is defenseless i i i would agree with that you know it's on you on on not hitting a player that's defensive i mean the rule is there you're supposed to uh, to to kind of apply it uh, there's something to say too is like there's a you know you I think I saw Wayne Gretzky get hit once, you know, at center ice. And and the reason was a lot of those guys, when they would make a play, you st you can't just watch your puck, you know, and you could clearly see there the kid is watching his puck. Now, doesn't mean there's a right to, to hit that player, but I think it's like th there's that, I can't remember what it is. It's like either one second or, you know, so, you know a tenth of a second or, you know, or half a second. I don't know. What the timing is but uh, you know definitely you can't hit guys from behind and you can't hit guys to the head and if a player is totally defenseless uh, absolutely we got to protect the players first and do you think somebody's reputation should play into this yep i think it does i think it does uh, the league keeps track of all the guys that keep doing it over and over and absolutely i'm not i wouldn't say the the reputation as much as if the guys has a habit of doing it absolutely it does yeah What's the dirtiest hit you've ever been on the recipient, uh, receiving end of? Uh, dirtiest hit I've ever been part of, uh, probably Craig Simpson hit me real hard at center ice when I wasn't looking. Kind of like that, but he caught me in the head. And I would say Mark Tenorti. Mark Tenorti, I wasn't missing. Nice. He yeah. hit me so hard that my stick flew in the stands. I, I got up, I didn't know what. This is like pre when we knew how to handle concussion. And I was kind of out and I was looking for my stick. I couldn't find it. Came back to the bench, they gave me a little sniffer, and he went back and played. It was crazy in those days. So who's the one who who enforced that action on your team? Who's the one who came out and enforced it uh, on your behalf after something like that hit? 
no, the, the there one wasn't. on Craigslist, there was no one. But we always had Marty McSorley to take care of us. He always, <laughs> he was always there helping us. <laughs> on on the Mark Tenorti one, I got him later, which I was very happy. Yeah, and he was like, "Are you kidding me?" I think he couldn't <laughs> believe that I, I got him, but I think he got a kick out of it that I got him back. <laughs> okay, I like it. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.